<clears throat> okay, we're going to pick up on 312, 313, but before we do, um, I just want to point out that according to Bartimaeus, in a footnote that is on page 36, he says that there are five basic ranks of, he doesn't qualify it, beings, okay? Um, working for magicians, okay? This is the important qualification here. Why? Because he begins that page at the top of the page. He says, or actually I think it's at the top of the um, footnote. He says there is an infinite variety of these beings. Okay? There are a whole bunch above the merit level that magicians don't work with. Why? They're too powerful. And in fact, at the end of this book, we're going to see one come in, but in the next two books, we're going to see more of these things, okay? Because of people who think they can control them. So from, in terms of the ones that, that magicians can use, from top to bottom, from most powerful to least powerful, Myriads, Afrites, Jinn, Foliots, and Imps. Who does, for example, where does Nathaniel have an imp imprisoned? In his scrying glass. Foliots, he doesn't have any. Notice Bartimaeus is here, but even notice in these there are what? There are levels. Because we're told Bartimaeus is a 14th level Jinn. That implies... 14th is higher up, like first level would be one, two, three, four. So he is, you know, probably on the high end of the gym, going up closer to an effort, okay? For whatever that's worth. But it's going to become a little bit important later on. So we left off on 312 um, the other day with Bartimaeus telling. Um, Suggesting to Nathaniel he could make a fire if he wanted to. You know, Nathaniel doesn't have to issue a command why there are pentacles anymore. So he makes him a fire. And he says at the bottom of 312, how does that feel? Melting nicely, I hope. I waited politely for an answer, but Nathaniel said nothing. I'll tell you one thing. You're an interesting specimen. I've known a fair few magicians in my time. There aren't many who are quite as suicidal as you. Most would think that popping in to tell a powerful enemy you pinched his treasure wasn't a terribly bright idea, right? Because Nathaniel had an out. He had an escape route. All he had to do was listen to Bartimaeus. Especially when you're utterly defenseless. In other words, some might have popped in to said something, to say something, but they weren't utterly defenseless. You all into his work. Nathaniel, I had to. Hmm, no doubt you had a brilliant plan, which I and Loveless, for that matter, completely miss. So what was, your, what was your plan? Be silent. He goes, no, you can't tell me that. That was your plan? To be silent? It's a simple one, I'll say that much. Don't forget it was my life you were risking. Ah, now we're told, again, why Bartimaeus saves Nathaniel's hide. Bartimaeus is still thinking of that ten with Rosemary at the bottom of the Thames. So, now that Nathaniel is running for his life, Bartimaeus is what? He's tied to him. He's bound with him at the hip. Until something happens to that tobacco tin at the bottom of the Thames, Bartimaeus has got to help this kid. Why? Because that's his destiny, to be bound there. So, Bartimaeus says, Don't forget it was my life you were risking too back there, acting out your strange convulsion of conscience. Notice, what is a convulsion? It's an involuntary spasmic muscle contraction. You, involuntary. You have no control over it. He's saying, your outbreak of conscience there, that was also something 
over which you had no... You didn't intend to do that, he's saying. You didn't volunteer that, right? So, he goes on. I had another master like you once. He had the same mulish obstinacy, seldom acted in his own best interest, didn't live long. Well, what form have we seen Bartimaeus take so far? He's taken a bunch of different forms, right? When he goes down to Lovelace is first, he's a pigeon, takes bird form, takes a spider form. When he gets caught in the mournful orb, he takes a variety of forms and he gets smaller, 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 smaller. What human form have we seen him take? Ptolemy, we find out later, a boy named Ptolemy, an ancient Egyptian, okay, who is about whose age? Really close to Nathaniel's. So, Bartimaeus says, all's well that ends well. All's well? What's Nathaniel thinking? My master and his wife are dead. He doesn't really care about his master. But Mrs. Underwood was innocent, right? She never mistreated him. She's, in fact, we're told, the boy doesn't know this, she's against the whole practice of children being taken, sold, from their parents, etc. So, he says, you're alive. <laughs> That's well, isn't it? Doesn't that count as good? I hate to say this, but Lovelace was right. You were totally out of your depth last night. Magicians don't act the way you do. What's he saying? You're not one of them. You're not a magician, Nathaniel. It's what he's training for, right? He's got Bartimaeus at his command. He must be a magician. <coughs> So what does he mean? You're not acting like other magicians act. It was a good thing I was there to rescue you. So where are you going now? Prague? Why Prague? Well, it's London's enemy, first of all. Does he have any friends in London? No. What's, in fact, he going to be? Or at least we come to believe he's going to be. He's going to start being hunted down. Loveless is still looking for him. Do they know he's dead? No. He said, what? So you're going to go to London, right? Loveless knows Jesus, uh, Prague. Loveless knows you've, you've escaped. He'll be looking out for you. You've seen what he'll do to keep you quiet. Your only hope is to vanish. Leave London. A Prague would be safest. Prague. Why Prague? It's another major magical area. Why should I go to Prague? Magicians there might help you. Nice beer, too. Okay? I'm no traitor. Um, is he a traitor or is he not? Traitor implies what? Going against the government. Has he gone against the government yet? No, he hasn't. Okay? So, or he says, I have no intention of leaving, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And Bartimaeus is just kind of rattling off ideas. You know, you wouldn't be a very good laborer. Uh, you could become apprentice to a sewer rat. You could get, you know, bristle brush, hook, rubber plunger, wriggle up the world of opportunities out there, all of them better than being a dead magician. What's he mean? All of them better than being a dead magician. What's better than death? Any life, Bartimaeus is suggesting. Shut up. I don't need your suggestions. He stumbles to his feet, eyes blazing. The Jenny's jibes had cut through his weariness and grief to ignite a pent-up fury that suddenly consumed him. Well, what consumed him earlier? What led to his revenge against Simon Lovelace? Quiz question. Being beaten unconscious. Okay. Now he has a new pent up fury. It's still at, at Loveless, though. It's not about now being beaten unconscious. It's what? About killing Mrs. Underwood. 
partially at least. So it rose up from his, oh, his guilt, his shock, his mortal anguish, and used them for its fuel. Lovelace had said that there was no such thing as honor, that every magician acted only for himself. Now, notice our narrator is taking us inside Nathaniel's mind at this point. We are getting his thoughts. This is what he truly now believes, apparently. Very well, Nathaniel would take him at his word. Meaning what? He would become a magician like every other magician. He would not make such a mistake again. What mistake? Acting out of honor. Notice, mentally, who is Nathaniel identifying with here? Loveless. And by the way, that's how you pronounce that name. It's not Lovelace. It's Loveless. Why? I mean, literally, historically, that's how that name is pronounced. Why does Jonathan Stroud use it for our antagonists, the enemy's name? He's got a girlfriend, right? Simon Loveless? He kind of does, <clears throat> Shelby, but you were going to say something. That he you know, pretty much murdered her. But he doesn't. <laughs> Why? He doesn't know what love is. What does he love and what alone? Himself. himself. And power that he can <clears throat> gain for himself. Everybody else be screwed. All right? It's pretty, pretty good little um, name symbolism there, okay? The name Simon, we get from the name Simon a medieval practice called simony. Simony was the buying and selling of church officers, like priests and bishops and cardinals and such. Why? It goes back to the book of Acts, when a man named Simon came to Peter, I believe it was, and said, oh, I like this Holy Spirit thing that you have, <laughs> because you can raise the dead and heal lepers and sick people. How much does that cost? Can I buy the Holy Spirit from you so I can do that? And Peter said, uh, no, not for sale. And the guy dies. Okay? Well... What's he trying to do? He's trying to buy himself into power, right? Maybe not literally buy, though he has bought some stuff. How did he get the amulet? He had somebody steal it. How did he employ that person to steal it? He bought him off. He paid him to do it, right? So, Nathaniel's not going to make that mistake again, meaning... What's going to happen with his childish notion of honor? He's going to bury it, right? But Lovelace had made an error of his own. He had underestimated his enemy. He had called Nathaniel weak, then tried to kill him, and Nathaniel had survived. And just if you've read them before, just as with the Harry Potter novels, Lovelace does what? What is, if you're familiar with the Harry Potter novels, Who's, who's Lord Voldemort's enemy? Harry Potter, right? Why? Because Voldemort makes him that. He creates his own enemy. That's exactly what Loveless does. You want me to slink away? I can't. Loveless has murdered the only person who ever cared for me. Bartimaeus, notice, either misunderstands or intentionally suggests the wrong person. Underwood? His wife. I want justice for her. Well, what else did Loveless say wasn't real? It wasn't only honor. It wasn't only sense of responsibility. Justice, he also said. There was no real justice in the magical, in the magician's world. Why? What's justice? Justice is administered by the person who has the most power. Whether that's official 
legal justice or the kind of justice Simon Lovelace administered where? At Underwood's house. From his perspective, that was justice. He was stronger. He was weaker. What? The might, the mighty live. The weak die. This is a literary form of social Darwinism, man. <laughs> Survival of the fittest. Okay? And that's why Bartimaeus says, it's not justice you're after, boy. It's oblivion. In other words, who do you think you are going up against this guy? No, I want justice. He goes, fine. It'll be so easy following your master, his wife, into the darkness. So much easier than starting life afresh. Why? Because starting life afresh would mean what? He has to work at it. Your pride is ruling your head, leading you to your death. Okay, what's Bartimaeus trying to do here? Save himself, ultimately. How? Change his mind. He's trying to teach Nathaniel. Kid, listen. Okay? This isn't going to work out. So, give it up. Never. It's not even as if you're really a magician anymore. Look, look around you. And where are they? This isn't some cushy townhouse filled with books and papers. Where are all the candles? Where's all the incense? That is where the stuff you knew you need to do incantations. Where's the comfort? Ah, notice. What do magicians like? What do magicians have that commoners don't? Comfort. Food, clothing, warmth, nice digs, etc. Like it or not, Nathaniel, you've lost everything a magician needs. Wealth, security, self-respect, a master. You've got nothing. I've got my scrying glass. Woohoo! And, you know, Bartimaeus. He says, um, yeah, it's coming to that. Why don't you set me free now? Come on. Draw a circle. I've completed my charge. What was his charge? Bring me the amulet. He did. Spy on. I did. Okay. Uh, I'm not setting you free yet. Okay. Page 316. They're talking about what happened. He says, um, remember, you hid the amulet. You framed Underwood. No, I didn't intend Loveless to come. It, it was for security. Yeah, right. Your security. If Underwood had been any good, he'd have survived. He'd have fought Loveless off. Raised the alarm. You don't believe that. You killed them both. Notice, you killed them. I was going to expose Loveless. I was going to trap him with the amulet. Show the authorities. Who cares? All the would-have-beens, all the might-have-beens, We'll buy you how much coffee at the local, you know, diner? None. You were too late. You failed. Thanks to you, demon. You led them to the house. It's all your fault. And now I'm going to pay. Do you think you're ever going to be freed? No. You're staying permanently. It's perpetual confinement. He goes, really? Okay. And Bartimaeus says, then I might as well kill you myself right now. What have I got to lose? I'll be in the tin either way. You just said perpetual confinement. So why don't I just go ahead and kill you now? He says, no, I'll free you. I'll free you before the month is up. Free. What does free mean? And that, that doesn't mean destroy the tin, though that's implied. Free means I will say the spell that sends you back to the other place. And that's, by the way, where, what the place that Bartimaeus and all these beings come from is always called. It's just the other place. Okay? <coughs> Free me now. No, we've got work to do. I must avenge 
my master and his wife, Loveless Miss Penny. Okay. Bartimaeus says, forget it. Forget it. Release me, forget your troubles. I cannot. Why? I owe it to my master. He was a good man. Page 318. No, he wasn't. That's not the reason. It isn't justice or honor that drives you now, boy, but guilt. Okay? You feel guilty. You can't take the consequences of your actions. You seek to drown out what you've done to your master and his wife. That is, you're trying to take these two big heavy weights on one side of the scale and replace them with what? Getting loveless. Getting loveless isn't going to do what? Bring the Underwoods back. All right? If that's the way humans choose to suffer, fine. Leave me out. Nope. You'll obey me if you want your freedom. Going after loveless practically amounts to suicide. Yours and mine. So why shouldn't I kill you now? He says, here's the bargain I'll make with you, Nathaniel. Help me avenge myself on Loveless, and I'll set you free immediately afterward. That is, I won't even wait till the month is up. Then there can be no doubt about our positions. It's in both our interests. He says, okay, yeah, yeah, that's a fair arrangement. Dictated from a one-sided position of power. Notice, I don't have a choice, do I? So, what do they decide to do? They've got to figure out why he wants the amulet in the first place. <coughs> well, didn't Loveless kind of give the game up? What did he talk about? He mentioned Rupert Devereaux, right? The current prime minister? How do you get his job? His master assassinated. His master assassinated the previous prime minister. <clears throat> For what purpose? To set him up in that position. Right? <clears throat> and he applies, and that's been happening for a long time. What is Loveless suggesting? Well, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to take care of this <clears throat> prime minister. And I'm going to be the prime minister. Right? And he mentioned a conference that was coming up. Okay. So, chapter 32. To get a copy of the newspaper, we're told the Times is the government's official paper. That is, it's the mouthpiece of the government. It is what spouts off government propaganda. Okay. And let's see here. Uh, I'm going to skip a bunch. Okay. So they get the paper. They talk about it. Um, Bartimaeus tells Nathaniel, bottom of 325, 326, what he's learned about the amulet, top of 326, it protects its wearer from magical attack. It's as simple as that. That is, you wear it around your neck, and anybody who tries to attack you, the amulet just absorbs it. It just, it's like a giant cushion, so that you don't get hit. You don't get hurt by any kind of attack, no matter how strong the thing that sends it. Why? Because the amulet itself has an extremely powerful spirit being contained within it. Not one of these levels. It's even more powerful than one of these five. Right? So, he says, one of my informants stated the amulet is rumored to contain an entity from the heart of the other place. The heart of the other place. Think of the other place as being like this. Okay? It's a circle. The heart of the other place is here. What's he implying? Closer you get to the center of it, what? 
the more powerful the beings are. So where's Bartimaeus from? He's out here. Why? He's one of these five levels. And these are the five levels that humans can't control. You go farther in and it's hard to control. But somebody, a couple thousand years ago, was able to control something from the heart of this and put it in this amulet. So this amulet is really powerful. Notice, however, the amulet cannot be used how? Offensively. It's totally defensive. But being totally defensive and having the almost unlimited power it has, that in and of itself kind of makes it an offensive weapon, right? Why? Because nobody can hurt you. So you can go up to anybody, even if they're 100 times more powerful than you, draw them in, they attack, you're not hurt, right? So, um, Bartimaeus says, it's clear, Loveless is going to use this in the next few days, that conference, he's seizing power, that old story. Why that old story? He's seen it 5,000 years. So it goes to, back to 3,000 BC. How old is that story? <laughs> as old as humanity. Okay. You have something I want. I said, I like those headphones. I think I want them. Tyler's a lot bigger than I am. But what if I have magic and he doesn't? I have power, he doesn't. And I say, but I like those. Let's say those have power. Okay. Power gives you what? The right to enact, enforce your will on somebody else. So that's why he says that old story. Anytime two people have a conflict, the conflict in one sense is ultimately about whose power is stronger. He's a renegade, a traitor. He's a normal magician. You're all the same. Okay, now keep in mind, what is Bartimaeus' power compared to Nathaniel's? He's more powerful, right? Heck of a lot more powerful. But He's enslaved because Nathaniel knows words of power that can control him. But what happens if those words of power are not pronounced correctly or the circle isn't drawn correctly? Then that gives Bartimaeus free reign. Notice what free reign means. There are no reins controlling him. So he can now <coughs> use his power. All right? What? How dare you? Oh, shut up. Well, you're not, you know, you're not like that yet. Give it a few years. Why give it a few years? Because you're going to grow up and you're going to be just like the rest of them. He says, you're going to go to work for the government. And what's the government going to do? It's going to turn and twist you. All right. So. Page 327, he says, you know, my master thought that the resistance was the one doing these explosions, terrorist events, things like that. Okay. Bartimaeus says, yeah, could be, but they're disorganized. They'll get you in the end. It always happens. Look at Egypt. Look at Prague. What's he getting at? In the past, in other governments, in other countries, there have also been resistance elements. And what have they done? They've gotten organized. They've gained power. They've overthrown the governments. And then they become the magicians. And a new resistance rises up. And they overthrow those magicians. And they become the new magicians. And a new... It's the cyclical nature of history. In other words, okay. So, Nathaniel says, I'm going to attend that conference. I'm going to figure out, I'm going to go there. 
Okay. So they read about the conference, page 328 in the newspaper. Who's going to be there, et cetera, et cetera. Where it's going to be at. So now they know where it's going to be at, but they don't know where that place is. So they've got to figure that out. And because that's all the leading members of government, what's the security going to be like? <coughs> to the max. It's going to be like, you know, if the president were to host in D.C. all the heads of NATO or, you know, the G20, what, what happens security, you know, when that happens? Every year when there's the opening of the, you know, New Year for the United Nations and heads of state all go, what happens to security in, in New York? It, it ramps up, right? So, they've got to figure out how to get there, okay? Um, let's see. So, he sends his imp to go off and find the hall. He does. He comes back. He says, <laughs> give it up. There are so many defensive spells and, and such. You're never going to get in there. Okay? So, skip a bunch again. Nathaniel goes out. He's tired of being, you know, stuck in the library, et cetera, et cetera. And page 30, 336, he gets, um, what do we want to call this, mugged by this group of kids. What group of kids? Where have we seen these kids before? In the alley, when Bartimaeus first gets the amulet, and the girl <clears throat> sees the amulet, even though it's hidden. All right? So, they talk to John. They've kind of, you know, stopped him. They won't let him go. They ask him what his name is. He says, John, uh, notice, Lutchens, we're told, is how it's pronounced. Yeah, or we posh, et cetera, et cetera. You ask him where he's from, he says Highgate. Highgate is a very expensive area in North London. Okay. He says he doesn't have anything. They say, yes, you do. Well, what does he have? He's, crying glass. he's got his crying glass with him. Okay. Um, they try to take it. They threaten to kill him. And they do take it. And we see... Page 342. Um, he's following them after they take his crying glass. The girl stops him. We're told 342. In the instant, Nathaniel was allowed. He only caught a glimpse, but it imprinted itself indelibly upon his mind. A girl's face. Pale, young, straight, dark hair. Eyes wide, startled, not scared, fierce too. He heard her cry command, saw Fred lunge forward, glimpsed something pale and shiny, shoot toward him out of the darkness. Nathaniel ducked frank frantically, cracked the side of his head against the brickwork of the building. Bile rose to his throat. That is, he started to throw up. He sees lights and passes out. 342. Fred says, I can cut his throat for you, kitty. So he offers to kill him. Why? Because Nathaniel's now spying on them. And she says, no, he's only a stupid kid. Let's go. Okay? So, back to Bartimaeus. Bartima uh, he tells Bartimaeus about what happened. Went to get a newspaper. Paper boy talks about the girl. Bartimaeus says, what girl? He describes her. Okay? Uh, she took my disc, 346. She's a thief and traitor. He says, how did they know you had the desk? Did you show it? No. Do you think I'm stupid? That's beside the point. Why? Because he does think he's stupid. Why does he think he's stupid? He followed him. One, because he followed him. Why else? Because he left the building in the first place. He said, you know, Loveless has got to have people out looking for you. 
beings out looking for you. This, that was boneheaded, right? So, I don't know, the paper boy knew. Hmm. And he talks, to, Bartimaeus thinks about the kids who tried to take the amulet from him, okay? So, they go on, and Bartimaeus talks about the things guarding the house, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. And go to 348. So he says, hmm, the kid. Where did he rate in my list of all-time human lows? He wasn't the worst master I'd endured. Presented some peculiar problems. All sensible magicians know when the time is right to fight. They risk themselves rarely. The kid had the clue. He'd been overwhelmed by a disaster brought about by his own medley. His reaction was to lunge back like a wounded snake. Whatever his original grudge against Lovelace's previous discretion had now been replaced by desperation powered by grief. Simple things like self-preservation were disregarded. He was going to his death. He goes, you know, and that's going to be my death. Okay. So. Um, we're going to go on. And we're going to skip a bunch. They get out to the country because they're going to Heddle, Heddle, Heddle him Hall. And we're told, page 253, right? The boy was looking quite pale and unsettled. It's nothing, just I'm not used to so much space. I can't see any houses. Why? He's never been outside London. He's never seen the countryside. Bartimaeus is like, no house is good, means no people, no magicians. For Nathaniel, he says, it makes me feel strange. It's, it's quiet. Okay. Why? Where do magicians live? Primarily in London. They don't live out in the country. And he asks, Nathaniel does, 354, don't they realize how vulnerable they are? That is, these commoners out in the country, they've got no defenses. Any magical attack and they'd be helpless. Bartimaeus, perhaps that's not high on their list of priorities. There are other things for them to worry about, you know, like making a living. Not that you have to worry about that. Oh no, to be a magician is the greatest calling. Our skills and sacrifices Hold the country together. Those fools should be grateful. We're there. Grateful, you mean, for people like Lovelace? And those he has in his employ? Who keeps the quote-unquote economy going in this world? Is it the magicians? Are they the ones who man the factories? Are they the ones who work the fields? Are they the ones who drive the trucks? No. All the commoners. All right? So, they keep talking. Bartimaeus mentions again, doesn't like being called a demon. We're going to skip a bunch. Um, let's see here. They take the grocer's truck, sneak in. And page 384, they sneak in, Nathaniel now has on essentially a waiter's outfit, and we're told it had been a close shave, top of that page. His heart was beating fast, mine was calm. The guilt that had beset him after the fire had now hardened into a cold acceptance of his situation. Mrs. Underwood had died because he had stolen the amulet. Notice, she was dead because of something Nathaniel did. This is, these are his thoughts. She died, he survived. So be it. Now he would destroy Lovelace in his turn. He knew the likelihood was that he would not survive. Okay. A certain heroism in this equation appealed to him. Clear and simple. So, we see he and Bartimaeus go about their 
duties. We see the Prime Minister, 387, we're told, making a show of his power. And 391, we overhear um, Loveless, Nathaniel's been <coughs> caught because he was spotted by one of the people who was at Underwood's house the day that Nathaniel was beaten into submission. Top of 391, we're told Rufus Lyme recognized you. Okay? 391, Loveless is speaking. You're not fretting, um, his master says, you're not fretting about the woman, are you? Loveless's master says this to him. Amanda, of course not. She's nothing to me. Why is she important? This is her home. She arranged this whole thing, this kind of conference, right? Pentacle is ready. I've got to, you know, right? So 393, Nathaniel goes on. He's talking with Loveless's master. He says, uh, you mentioned a proposition. He says, yes. Few minutes, most powerful, eminent ministers in the government will be dead, along with our prime minister. When Simon's new administration takes place, you can be where? You could be at his right hand. He knows you're strong, he knows you're powerful. Join with him, okay? You have the makings of a great magician. Why? Because of what he tried to pull off. As a gutsy move, okay? Page 394. Does Loveless really think I'll join him? He does. After everything that's happened? Yes. He knows how your mind works. Why does Loveless think he knows how Nathaniel's mind works? He looks at Nathaniel, what does he say? Himself. Himself. And that's why Nathaniel says that he's a fool. An arrogant fool. After what he's done to me, he could offer up the world and I'd refuse it. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul? Christ asks. Notice, John says, Nathaniel says, he could offer me the world and I wouldn't take it. Why? Because he'd lose. He doesn't use the language. He would lose his soul. He'd lose himself. He wouldn't be who he is. Right? So, he says no. And what does he do? To old Skyler. Kills him. It's his first kill. Okay? We won't quite finish this, but we'll get pretty close. So, we see the summoning horn. And... Uh, Skip a bunch. Where we will pick up on Friday is because it won't take long. Um, we'll probably pick up. Where is it? In the chapter 41, I think, where it goes back and forth between Bartimaeus and, um, yeah, between Bartimaeus and Nathaniel. And what we're really going to move to is beginning with 432 and following. So pick up around, no, I take that back. We will pick up around chapter 42. So still, uh, I still suggest having about a fourth of the next book read because we will get into that on Friday.